Hello, everyone. Welcome to Now and Them, our last episode of 2022. I am your host, Julia Jorce Silverberg, and I'm here with my co-host, Andreas Medina. And this is our monthly show where we bring you behind the keyboard to talk about breaking news, share tips and tools to help you up your digital marketing game, all while having a lot of fun. Our goal is to be a voice and a sounding board for social media marketers because the world of social media is constantly changing and we want you to know that you are not alone. So we like to think of this as our little monthly laugh and learn. And today, given the timing, it's like a little lunch and learn. So are you excited for this month's show, Andres? So excited. Um, honestly, I, I can't wait to see what Rich is gonna share with us on how to stand out online. I feel like I get asked that like people ask me that a lot like how do i stand out online among competitors and like how do i make myself remarkable for others and i'm really excited to see what rich is going to share with us i'm learning as much as everyone else so ready to get started i'm so excited as andre said we have the amazing rich brooks on for this month's guest and he's going to dive into the remarkability formula rich is an inspiring and passionate speaker and he's someone who's really going to help you end the year strong and uncover what makes you remarkable so that you can bring that out and really stand out online so andreas are you ready to dive into some news let's get after it We have a lot of news for you guys this month, so I'm just gonna get right into it. The first story we have is about Instagram. So Instagram is testing more be real like elements as it tries to lean into the shift of authentic content on social media. Like people wanna see real things, real time, and be real has shown that because it has skyrocketed in growth. People don't wanna see airbrushed, edited photos anymore. And so Instagram is working on something that they're calling roll call, which would enable a group chat, basically, like members of a group chat could require participants in the group chat to have to send a photo or a video of themselves within five minutes. So essentially it's very, it's very similar to be real because it's that you have to do it right now kind of timely element. And it's the whole idea of showing that unedited what you're doing right now kind of look. So Andreas, are you using be real? What do you think about this? I am using it and I've seen it on uh, Instagram as well. Um, I'm really excited to see this group thingy. I can't wait to like create my close friends group and actually um, had that roll call. Um, but Be Real has grown in me, especially because since it's like real time, I just add my close friends. I'm not adding a friend that I had in high school that I didn't chat with, like I follow him on Instagram. I only have my close friends and it's always cool to see um, what they're doing at the moment of being real. <laughs> <laughs> so moving forward to our next news article this one is about tiktok so tiktok um is offering new audience insights data that allows people to drill, drill down into a specific demographic details now some of the filters that i saw on the, mentioned on the article um were age demographics gender splits interest categories video interactions creators interactions hashtag interactions and which device they're using now, this I, this is a big step for TikTok. Um, creators want to see the results. They want to see the data so they can better their content. So really excited to use this. I'm, I don't have any client. I'm not. I don't have any business on TikTok, so I I wouldn't know how this looks from a business perspective. But I'm sure that as business, buy into the process of joining TikTok and just start using it. Um, I'm gonna start using these tools. <laughs> what do you think? Do you have any clients on TikTok? I don't think you have, do you? No, I, I I mean, I know that we have your new puppy as a now client on TikTok, and I know that they are seeing some amazing things happening on TikTok. And I think that just this addition of this functionality, the, 
the ability to see these insights is going to help businesses who were maybe on the fence because of the lack of data feel like, okay, now is the time for us to actually dive into TikTok because we know that we can really dive into this data that's super important as brands and marketers. So I'm super excited about that. So the next story we have is about Snapchat. Snapchat is doing something super cool right now. They have partnered with the brand New Balance to launch a new AR-focused push for the holidays specifically. And it incorporates something called voice ML, which is basically audio prompts. And that is incorporated into the experience. So basically what it is, is this new balance lens, when using it, Snapchat users will be prompted to answer a series of questions in the app using their voice as opposed to typing which will then help them to discover the best product matches for their specific purpose based on what they're looking for. So this New Balance lens is live right now, only in the United States, only on iOS and Android, now through December 31st. And it can be accessed in the article that I read about it in social media today. It can be accessed via the lens carousel in the app. I think it's just super cool to see this is an example of how brands are using augmented reality to create immersive, customized experiences for their audiences. So as brands, I think that some people might still be wary or confused about how does VR and AR relate to my business? What are ways that we could actually use this technology? This is a great example of how you could do it. So I just think it's super cool. Agreed. And I like chat wrote down here, Snapchat, it's still alive. The meta is actually bringing Snapchat back up. I'm, I'm using it more than ever now that they implemented um, something similar to reels. I don't know the exact name behind it, but it, there's a section similar to reels for like short form video content. Um, so that's also something interesting. We might, I might need to find an article about that so we can share it on the, on the group. Um, but yeah, it's Snapchat, it's still alive. I think uh, Meta is making the right moves to bring it back up. Um, our next news article is about YouTube. So in a push in the direction of live shopping, YouTube is launching another monetization option for shorts. Um, so in this experiment, creators will be able to tag products for purchases within their short clips, which means the viewers can see tags and shop directly inside of the app. So I feel like this is similar to Instagram shop and you can tag your products in the pictures, but for shorts and straight from YouTube, which is linked with Gmail and Google. Really excited to see this. Julia, I know you're on YouTube. You have a channel. Feel free to promote it here. <laughs> Are you so funny? Because I know you do have a lot of um, products that you promote on your videos. Totally. Well, I'm not using this yet, but I think that this is just such a cool feature because, again, the more that creators can make it easy and seamless to be recommending products that they use and love directly in their content and to allow people to purchase things directly in the app. It's just such an easy experience for the user. And the more social media platforms are creating that ease of use and that kind of functionality, the more they're going to have people hanging out and spending time in their platform. So I think this is super cool, super cool for YouTube. I can't wait to see it on people's Shorts, I haven't seen it yet in real time, but I'm really excited to see how people start to integrate this feature sure. into the content that they're creating. So in Twitter news, um, in the latest, you know, Elon Musk, I feel like is quite the character to be following with everything that he's doing with Twitter. And in his latest effort to get people to be more active on Twitter, he's doing that specifically because he's pushing this $8 verification strategy. And in order for that $8 verification strategy to actually work, he needs people to be tweeting because what he's seeing in the data is that there are a lot of people on Twitter, but there are a lot more people that are just observing than there are creating content. And if you're just there to observe, you're definitely not going to pay to get the little blue tick or the check mark. So Elon Musk is basically looking for a way to get people to be willing to pay for this verification. And so he's basically trying to tell people like, there's a lot more reach and 
it's just going to be interesting, I think, in the world of Twitter, like to watch as this evolves, to see whether this rolls out, whether people actually are willing to spend their money to get the verification, because I don't know that he's going to get the result that he's looking for. What do you think? Um, it's been a month since I said that Twitter is unknown territory since Musk, Musk took over. And I still believe it. Like, I haven't changed my thought. Like, Twitter is still an unknown territory, in my opinion. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. Like, things happen daily. Things change are changing daily as Musk pleased. So I just want to see where this is going to end up at, you know? I feel like everything is still, like, in a beta section since he took over. Yes. So I want to see when everything is finally organized and set, how it's going to look. Me too. Um, our next news article, and this one is actually from an organized platform, <laughs> <laughs> um, LinkedIn. So LinkedIn ne uh, new focus inbox format, uh, which reroute less value messages into other tabs, similar to what um, Instagram has with um, primary and general messages. So you can yeah. now filter out um, which ones are important, which ones seems like scams or promotions. Um, so I think that this is super helpful for like heavy LinkedIn users that always get these promotional messages that we all hate because it's, it's like a script that they sent. Um, so really excited to see this. Um, apparently it's available for everyone. Um, I use LinkedIn for my computer, so I haven't really noticed it. Um, so I have to check up from my phone. But have you seen this yet for you? I haven't seen it, but I will admit that I haven't looked for it specifically in the last few days. But I think that this is just gonna be so great for people to be able to just get through the messages and have a place where they know these are the important real messages versus these are things that just like you said, come across as spammy and aren't messages that are even worth responding to because there are a lot of those kinds of messages, especially on LinkedIn. So I'm excited to see this roll out for everyone. So that is our news for the month. So now it's time to do some shout outs. So this is our time of the show where we shine a light on you. We celebrate you, what you've got going, what is exciting in your life. We actually, December is the only month in the calendar year for Now Marketing Group that we have no team birthdays or anniversaries, which I just always think is so funny. It's like, we just shine a light on the holidays. We get excited for celebrating with our friends and family, for closing down the office in between Christmas and New Year's to just get that extra time with our loved ones. So we don't have any team birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate, but if you guys are celebrating something, we wanna know. So definitely put it in the comments because we wanna be able to celebrate you. I know Shadea on our team is so excited for Christmas. She loves Christmas, you guys. Um, I know that, oh, it's Kara's <laughs> half birthday. So it shout out to Kara so for her half birthday. I love that, Kara. <laughs> That's yeah, so great. You, Kara. So yeah, you guys, happy holidays we hope that you guys are gonna spend the time with your friends with your family just really pouring into yourself and ending the year feeling amazing so before we bring on our amazing guest who happened to be a speaker at social media week lima as we're ending the year we have social media week lima on the brain because as soon as 2023 is here we are going to be full-blown thinking about the conference planning for the conference i mean we already have been but we're going to really put you know, hit the hit the gas on it and really amp up the speed. So we are so, so excited. But rather than me tell you all about the conference, we're just going to let this video tell you all about it. to shrink the distance between us and our customer? How can we show up to provide better experiences? What does that look like? 
without care the competition and you can grow your brand. Because relationships are the currency of business and experiences are the transactions that we're exchanging. How are we making people feel? How are we building relationships with them? I am so excited to have Rich Brooks on as our special guest. Chad's going to bring him in here in just a second. And you guys, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Rich. Rich is the founder and president of Flight New Media, a digital agency in Portland, Maine, that's been in business for nearly 25 years. He's a nationally recognized speaker and entrepreneur, digital marketing and social media. He's founded the Agents of Change, an annual conference and weekly podcast that focuses on search, social, and mobile marketing. He's the author of The Lead Machine, The Small Business Guide to Digital Marketing. This popular and well-received book helps entrepreneurs and marketers reach more of their ideal customers online. And he also appears regularly as the tech guru on evening on the evening news show 207, which airs on the NBC affiliates in Maine. He has also appeared in Inc. Magazine, Huffington Post, Fast Company, CNN.com, Social Media Examiner, you name it, he has been there. Rich, we're so happy to have you on as our guest of the month. Well, I'm really excited to be here, and it was awesome watching those highlights from uh, Social Media Week Lima, because not only did I see myself in there, I actually saw my girlfriend. In fact, she got more screen time than I did, <laughs> so I need to talk to your editor. But other than that, it was it was exciting. I had a great time. I think I got like 12 guests on my podcast, The Agents of Change, just from the speakers that you had on stage. So it was just a really great collection of speakers, and, and I had an awesome time. So I'll just oh. throw that out there. Well, that is amazing to hear. I love hearing, especially that you got so many guests on your podcast as a result of the conference. I mean, that's really where that's where the value is at, you guys, is in the relationship building and the quality of the speakers that we have. Rich and people like Rich, these incredible speakers who have spoken on stages all over the country, all over the world, come to Lima, Ohio, little old Lima, and deliver their expertise, bring their energy and enthusiasm for what they do. And it's just incredible that you had such a good time. We loved having you and your girlfriend there. It was such a good year. We're so excited for next year. Absolutely. So you guys, I'm gonna dive into some questions with Rich, but Rich was super generous. We were talking in the pre-show and Rich is willing to give three of you guys 30 minutes of his time to pick his brain, talk about what makes you remarkable. So make sure you are tuning in in the comments. Let us know that you want that time with Rich because at the end of the show, we'll be picking who those three lucky people are. So let's dive into some questions. So Rich, before we actually get into the nitty gritty of the remarkability formula, tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into digital marketing. Oh boy. All right. Well, uh, 
my company, Flight New Media, a digital agency, uh, started 25 years ago. So it has been a long, long journey. I was building websites back on my Macintosh Performa, really just not wanting to work for anybody else. But slowly over time, I uh, was getting more and more requests. Also started getting into search engine optimization, then social media. So it was just kind of one of these things where I saw something, I was interested to understand how it worked, I would figure it out, and then I would turn to a, a client or a prospect and say, I think this is going to be really good for you and just over time continue to uh, learn more, deepen my my understanding, hire people who are much better at my jobs than I was, and then continue to grow the company to where it is today. And that's and along the way also started a couple of different conferences. And the one that I'm bringing back for 2023 is the Agents of Change. It'll be the first year in a few years that we've had this as a live in-person event in Portland, Maine, um, and the podcast as well. So that's Hopefully amazing. that answers your question. It does. And I've heard incredible things about your event. So that's super exciting that you'll be bringing it back in 2023. Um, so what is what would you say your favorite thing is in working in digital marketing? I would say probably just having the opportunity to kind of sit down with business owners and marketers and problem solve with what's going on in their business. Why aren't they getting the type of clients they want? Why aren't they getting as much business as they want? Um, and just how do we fix that? How do we change that? So that kind of strategic thinking and problem solving is my favorite part because as time has gone on uh, and we've grown as a company, I'm less hands-on. Like I'm not the one running the Google ads or the Facebook ads or Instagram. So for me, it's more like that big strategy piece. And then watching the people on my team, almost all of whom are younger than me now, uh, really kind of grow into their roles as marketers and watching them kind of take on the mantle and helping other people that that process and that journey is probably the most rewarding part right now for me. I love that. That's that's incredible. So you are known for something called the remarkability formula, and it's something that you spoke about and inspired our Social Media Week Lima 2022 audience on. Before we dive into that formula, I want to know in your mind, what does it mean to be remarkable? <laughs> that's a great question because the word is terrifying to a lot of people. Like there's some self doubt out there and there's like, oh, I'm not remarkable. I'm not even interesting. And my whole point about you or your brand being remarkable is just that there is something that makes you different, you unique to the particular people that you want to serve, that there's something that's worth remarking upon. So that's how I'm using the word remarkable. I know it sometimes gets blown out of proportion, but that's what we're talking about. Can we get people paying attention, remarking on what you're doing and interested in how you're helping other people? I love that. So <coughs> How can brands and individuals tap into what makes them remarkable? Right. So uh, I do have this whole thing uh, as part of the remarkability formula, and we can kind of dive in as deep as you want. But the idea behind the remarkability formula is that there are four lenses I recommend, four lenses that you can shine on yourself or your business to kind of either uncover or create something that's truly remarkable about you. So I think it's just a matter of, you know, doing a little self uh, reflection, taking a look, whether it's you, whether it's your entire company, whether you're interviewing your customers and clients, but trying to understand what's of value to them. Because one of the things that I say is, just like beauty being in the eye of the beholder, it's really up to your customers to determine if what you think is remarkable is truly remarkable. Because if you're doing something you think is, oh, it's so amazing, but it's not interesting to anybody else, then that's not remarkable. It has to be something that your audience, and it may be something you do every day and you don't think it's remarkable, but then you find out that that's the very reason why people chose you in the first place or stayed with you or moved from their current vendor to you. It's because you did something different and it's about identifying and naming, naming that remarkability that will make it so easy for you to then to go out and talk to other people and get them excited about what you have to offer. I love that. That's that is truly incredible. So is, is that is that the remarkability formula? You said there were four lenses. I'd love you yeah, to kind so, of break down maybe what that formula is. Perfect. So I'll kind of talk through the four and then I'll let you decide how deep you want to go into any one of the four lenses. But basically the four lenses are find, focus, forge, and frame. So with find, 
there's already something remarkable about your company and you just need to identify and name it. There's already a reason that people choose you and really it's just about getting that clarification. And that's where I usually recommend people start their journey because it doesn't require any changes to your business. It's the easiest one to adopt. But I also say that you should always go through all four lenses. So the next lens I usually tackle with, with businesses is the, uh, the focus. So that's all about niching down until you are the only company serving your particular audience with your particular solution. So you're really shedding any competition because there's no one else doing that for that audience. And then the third one, which is a little bit trickier, in fact, the last two are a little bit trickier sometimes for people to wrap their head around, is, uh, is Forge. And Forge is all about creating something, creating something that's maybe outside of your traditional offering, uh, but gets people talking, holds people's interests. And I've got examples of all these kind of things, but it could be about creating something, maybe something already you created, or maybe it's about creating something new that will draw attention and start people to to see what you're all about even if it's not part of your main offering and the last one i call frame and this is just all about how you position maybe what you're already offering in a new way either to attract a new audience or to really hone in what's important and valuable to your ideal customer and so taking people through those four lenses and really starting to layer those lenses on top of each other so that you can really find something that you can own. And the reason this is so important is because too many of us over the years get too excited about like, oh, I'm, I'm on Facebook or I'm on TikTok. I've got this whole TikTok thing going or, or um, I'm doing LinkedIn, I'm doing video. And those are all important things to do. But the problem is that these days there's so much competition. There's so many other things on social media and to a lesser degree through, well, not a lesser degree, also through search engines, also in email inboxes, that you have to find that thing that truly differentiates you. And once you have it, then the rest of that marketing becomes so much easier. I love that. It's That is brilliant. I'm like just here speedily typing so many notes so that we can turn this all into a blog post for our audience. So you guys, if you are, if you want to make sure that you get this delivered to your inbox, be sure to type the word recap in the comments because it will trigger our chat bot so that you can make sure that you get our blog post featuring all these great tips from Rich next week when it goes live. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, Rich, when, when you say it, Forge, I had to look it up. It's a new word for me. Um, Thankfully, Julia's taking notes. I can see the, the feed live, so I'm glad she's doing that. Um, this is all interesting, but you mentioned that the, the problem is that there is much competition usually. Um, would you say that that's the challenge that most people uh, face when they're finding their remarkability? Um, I think that's definitely one of the challenges and certainly should be the impetus behind it because that's one of the biggest things. If you're coming to market with just this same old that everybody else is doing, it's going to be very hard for you to create a compelling offer and to get people's attention. So I think doing this work up front, and that's one of the things at Flight we've been talking about internally and with our clients is like, let's spend more time up front figuring out the strategy, really identifying who is interested in your product, how we're going to get the message out to them, how we're going to engage them, all that sort of stuff. So I think that doing this sort of work, whether you're just opening your doors for the first time or whether you've been in business for 25 years, it's something that you should continue to do because there's always new competitors out there. And it's not just always necessarily another business. It could be a, a do-it-yourself uh, uh, com um, competitor out there. So people are suddenly doing a lot of what you used to offer. They're doing it themselves because now they know how. Or it could be that the industry shifting, you know, there could be a global pandemic or, or, you know, like changes in politics where all of a sudden it's like everything's up in flux. These are actually opportunities for you to take advantage of many times. People see them as something negative, but this is actually a great time for you to kind of look at your own business and being like, how can we make sure we're serving our audience, but how do we stand out to them in the first place? So they'll pay attention. Love that. Wow, that you answered most of my questions. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to skip ahead. Because my next question is like, how do you help people overcome these challenges? 
Yeah. Um, so I think when it, once you have identified what those are, so if you go through the process, uh, either by yourself or with us, and I'm actually working on a standalone work book that people can kind of go through this process themselves. But once you go through this, you'll start to identify uh, who is your ideal customer, what are they most interested in, and you can really get inspiration sometimes from some of the stories that you hear of other brands that have done similar things. And they can be simple ideas, you know. So, for example, with Find, you know, the story that I often tell on stage is when I needed my first house I ever bought. We moved in and the house was like bone dry, like the paint was flaking off and I knew I needed and from everybody I talked to, it was like a nightmare. Like you can never get the guys on the phone. They never show up. And when they finally do, it's like two guys, they basically turn your, your yard into what feels like a workspace for, for like months, even though it doesn't take that long. Uh, it's just a very unpleasant, long extended experience. And the company that we talked to actually promised they'd get the whole thing done in two days. So we hired them. They come, they come with 20 guys. Now, no painting company comes with 20 people on the team. That just doesn't happen. But these guys did. They painted the entire house top to bottom in one day. They were gone by sunset. I jokingly say, I think I heard them singing sea shanties the whole time. But the bottom line is a day or two later, they come back, they do the second coat, and that was it. And the project was over. And that's remarkable. Uh, my neighbors took notice when 20 people show up in like four or five vans and are throwing up ladders and, and getting the whole house done in such a short period of time. It's also, and this is a critical thing, it's also very hard to replicate. It's hard for other painting companies to suddenly hire 20 people on their team, especially in this economy, but anytime really. And, and in a place like Maine, which is so seasonal, to keep those busy people busy enough year round, like that makes this particular uh painting company, truly remarkable. So that's just an example of fine. They were already doing this. And if they had done a slightly better job of marketing that, of giving it a name, I think they would have found even more success than they did. But yeah, I like, I like, I'm just thinking, I'm trying to wrap my head around 20 people showing up into your house and paint it. That is, yeah. that's the experience that makes that remarkable. And that's amazing that I wish I had 20 people to come paint my house. <laughs> Honestly. Um, so do you have any tools, any favorite tools that you use to help brands or individuals um, become known or step into their power? I wouldn't say that there's any one specific thing that would make this work. I mean, the bottom line is a lot of what we're talking about today is really just, like I said, self-reflection. Sometimes it's about serving your current customer base, uh, if you have them, if you're not just starting up right now. Um, but then it's just a matter of implementing it. And mostly, although I certainly have my favorite social media channels and my favorite channels for engaging our particular audience, um, I think it's less about that. The most important thing is understanding who your ideal customer is and where they hang out online. So if it if you are in B2B, that probably uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, blogging, and Twitter are going to be your best channels. If you're in B2C, then mostly it's going to be like Facebook and Instagram, possibly TikTok. So, But it's about understanding who those ideal customers are and where they hang out online. So I don't know that there's any one-size-fits-all tool out there that help people with this particular process. Interesting. There's there's no AI for this. I've seen a lot of AI lately. Oh, I love AI. Don't even get me started on AI. I'm <laughs> completely fascinated by 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 AI. So my last question before we jump into the game time, um, who inspires you to be remarkable? <sighs> or what? Wow, that's a great question. And one I'm not prepared for, but so <laughs> I'll fall back to I hope this isn't a lame answer, but I would say both my parents. Um, my parents are amazing. Um, I'm sure a lot of people feel that way about my parents. No, about their own parents. Um, but for me, uh, my dad was a, a child and clinical psychologist for years, was well respected, but ultimately left his job, very cushy job, um, to basically start writing books and speaking publicly. He actually is also, or for a while, was a kind of the go-to TV guy for his local TV station outside of Boston. So it's kind of funny I'm doing the same thing, except in digital marketing and not psychology. Um, but just watching him and, and him not even thinking he's an entrepreneur, but kind of really growing his business and, and at the peak of his career, I mean, I guess maybe it still is, but he was speaking 300 times a year all over the world. 
you know, and that's just fantastic uh, to see that kind of enthusiasm and passion. And then on my mom, who used to be very quiet and slightly mousy almost and, you know, never would raise her hand uh, at our temple. She would never agree to go up on the beam and, and do a prayer or anything like that. She, then all of a sudden, like at 65 years old, she decides she wants to get bat mitzvah. She does all this sort of stuff to kind of overcome any of her concern and fear around that. And it's just it's a beautiful thing to see her really kind of become the person she was meant to be. Um, and then just kind of a side note with my mom, she is one of the most voracious readers you've ever met. She reads at least one mystery novel every single day of her life, sometimes two. Um, and a few years ago, I got her to start blogging um, about the books that she was reading to do reviews. And Marilyn's Mystery Reads.com, I'm pretty sure is the, if you Google it, you'll pull it up if that's not the exact domain. Um, but she now gets authors sending her copies of their books to review, to hopefully review, and she's got this whole following. So those are two people that inspire me to go out and try and be remarkable and do good work out there. That's awesome, man. There's no lane. It's not lane to be inspired by your parents. I feel like that's, that's the best inspiration someone can have, your parents. Oh, I love that so much. That's so heartwarming. <laughs> So now that you have made us, given us all the good feels and like really helped inspire us to find out what makes us remarkable, to do that self-reflection as we, and honestly, you guys, the end of the year is the perfect time to do this work. So I love that this episode is going to inspire people to really hone in on this so that they can end the year strong. So are you ready, Rich, to play some games? Let's do this. <laughs> Okay, so this is our little game segment, and we're going to start off with our favorite game called This or That, which is a rapid fire question style game. You're familiar with it because we played it at Social Media Week Lima. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to offer you this or that, and you're going to say what your preference is. Are you ready? Do, do I have to give a reason what my preference is? Do you want it's a short yes, why? It, it's it, exactly optional. Like totally that. up to you if, if you All feel right. like it. All right. Sounds good. Would you rather listen to classic rock or jazz? Classic rock. Just more comfortable with it, although I do love jazz. And just yesterday, I discovered a band called Jazz Sabbath, which does jazz covers of Black Sabbath. So there's that. Oh, that's So fun. maybe actually that's both. That is both. I do both. have to choose one or the other. So I'll go with, <laughs> I'll go with the uh, classic rock. I love that. Next, coffee or tea? Coffee. Sweet. Do you have a specific, do you have a go-to? Um, I don't. I just like my coffee really strong. I take it black with a little bit of sugar. And nice. uh, I know some people in the West think that that's not black, but on the East Coast, we say black with one sugar. That's how I like my coffee. <laughs> Sweet. I think I know the answer to this, but mountains or beach? Mountains. Today. Because I, I like to snowboard. In fact, if it was beach or lake, I'd probably go lake too, just because I feel that's more of a year round activity, at least when you live in the Northeast. I love that. I also would prefer, I think, lake. I just love to go out on a canoe. The lake is mm -hmm. very peaceful. Yes. Would you rather go skydiving or scuba diving? Um, I have been skydiving. I've never been scuba diving. I'm not great in the water. One year at camp, my nickname was the aquatic animal. That was meant <laughs> as a sarcastic insult. So I'll go with the skydiving again. <laughs> That's great. And my last question for you for this or that is, would you rather get $5 a day for the rest of your life or $15,000 today? Uh. Ooh. Well, I'll probably just take the $15,000 today. I know that over <laughs> time, it's probably the opposite. It probably doesn't work out that way, but I could take that $15,000, invest it in crypto. No, I wouldn't do that. I would invest it in something, and then suddenly that $15,000 would be worth a lot more. <laughs> that was that was Chad's answer too behind the scenes when he was going through the questions. So you guys, I'm super curious as to what your answers are. We I know that Joanna's saying 15k all the way. Kara said she wants to go scuba diving with Joanna. So I'm loving you guys chiming in in the comments. So now that we played this or that, we're gonna ask you a few more questions, and these are a little bit more kind of like get to know you questions, so you can expand sure a little bit. So. All right. What's your favorite thing about the winter? 
Uh, I would see just getting outside. So like uh, for me, I'm a snowboarder. I did ski. I didn't even learn to ski till I was 25. And I did that for about 10, 15 years. And then I switched over to snowboarding. And uh, although getting to the mountain is kind of a bear and then getting dressed and getting up to the top of the mountain is also a lot of work. And I'm always like, is this really worth it? As soon as I take that first run, I'm like, this is worth it. Like, this is why we live here. This is why I bundled up so much. This is why I sat in that long line for the chairlift and then the 20 minute ride to the top of the mountain. It's for this. And uh, putting together a couple of nice curves and nice turns in a row or going through the woods after I've got my legs underneath me, that's just unbeatable. <laughs> I know that OG is in the comments, like literally he's at home like, yeah, so oh my God, fellow snowboarder. <laughs> So that is awesome. If anyone else watching, if you guys are snowboarders, let us know in the comments. Um, so my next question for you, Rich, is what is the best purchase you've made in 2022 for under $200 and why? Under $200, 20. Okay. Uh, after uh, we went to Lima for the social media week uh, event there, uh, we went over to Cleveland and we got tickets to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They came in under $200. And as high expectations as I had for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I have to say it was even better. And I could have spent another two hours there. I just thought it was so well done and so interesting. Um, and uh, that probably was one of the best purchases I made all year. That's awesome. I went there years ago when I was a kid and have very, very fond memories of going there with my dad, who was a big classic rock fan. So that's, you guys, that's a fun little place to kind of add to your list of things to do if you're ever in the area. And my last question for you, Rich, is what's your least favorite holiday side dish? <sighs> Um, there's so many holidays, and since I already outed myself as a Hanukkah over Christmas person, I'll say gefilte fish has got to be the worst yeah. tradition in Jewish families ever. And if we could just stop doing that, that would be fantastic. <laughs> oh my God, I could not agree more. I mean, to be honest, Jewish food isn't real. We don't have that many great foods. Like matzo ball We're soup good is at, good. Oh yeah, matzo ball soup. But for, like for sure. other than that, like Deli, matzo. That's our sweet spot. Yes. That's where we shine is the deli, but outside of that and bagels, but only good bagels, not like 90% of bagels these days are not real bagels. They're just white bread in the shape of a bagel. But if you go to a good bagel place, On that's Long some Island. good Jewish food. Yeah, On you got to go to a Long Island. Brooklyn, yes. Uh, there, there's definitely some places or even around here that know how to make bagels. But uh, most of the bagels we see these days are like, you know, whatever. John says, watch what you say about bagels. Oh, John from my team is tuning in here and he works at Mr. Bagel. Oh, you worked at Mr. Bagel and he has a very soft spot in his heart. And I, when I first moved up to Maine, that was the only place you could get a bagel. So um, I'll, I'll watch my language, John. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm just trying to wrap my head around how you guys are talking about food and I'm getting hungry. And you're talking about how much you dislike the food. <laughs> you're like... Definitely eat a bagel right now. Um, I'm always hungry. Yeah. Chad just said, you're always hungry. Uh, I'm always hungry. Chad just, offered really, me a bagel when I was at Social Media Marketing. Uh, Social Media Week Lima, actually, up on stage. <laughs> it was raisin, though. So Chad, onion or garlic are my favorites, Chad, just for next time. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, Rich, I have two questions for you, and then you have two more questions, and then we're going to pick our three lucky winners that are going to spend 30 minutes with Rich. Um, so make sure you're chiming in, in the comments because there are going to be three lucky winners, not just one this time. Um, so, Rich, if you had to be in a, trapped in a Christmas movie, which movie would you like to be trapped in? I'll give this answer only to piss off my girlfriend, Gigi. It would have to be uh, Die Hard. Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Now nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into that because I know that's a huge debate for a lot of people. Um, <laughs> if you could fly any place today, where would you go, and why? If I could fly anywhere right now, where would I go, uh, Andres? I think I'd go down to Puerto Rico and I would hang out with you. We'd paint your house and we'd celebrate with a couple of uh, tequila drinks when we're all done. That will make it remarkable for me forever. <laughs> 
That's a remarkable experience right there. I love that. I also would, I'd hop on a plane to go somewhere warm in a quick second. Um, so I have two questions before we pick our lucky winners. Andreas, I've got two questions for you. You're always hungry. So I want to know, what is your perfect three-course meal? Oh, so recently I discovered a new Japanese restaurant in town. And they have this amazing appetizer plate, which has like crab rangoons and it has like egg rolls and a bunch of weird Japanese, I guess, or Asian cuisine appetizers. That will be my appetizer. Um, I love how your appetizer is like 17 it's appetizers. Like a poo -poo it's like it's, yeah, it's, like it's not <laughs> even, but okay, keep going. Right. <laughs> keep um, going. The main dish will probably be, I don't know, I, I think I would go with a nice ribeye, medium well, with mashed No, potatoes. medium well? <laughs> You're medium, killing medium, the beast. Medium, medium, medium rare. Medium well. No, you need to you need to eat something bloody, my oh, friend. You can't ask for medium rare in Puerto Rico. They'll give you a red piece of meat. You, you have to tell them meat, and then you'll get like something there. It depends on the great. place. It depends on the place. Like there's some places that I recognize that I gotta ask for a medium well because I know they don't cook it entirely. And then there's some places that I have to be like, yeah, cook it rare because they always overcook it. Um. So it depends. And then dessert, I'll get a cheesecake. Strawberry cheesecake, simple, New York style. <laughs> Chad Strawberry just says you guys yeah. behind the scenes, a whole <laughs> cheesecake, not a slice. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great three course meal, Andreas. I love it. I'm, I'm honestly surprised that there was no Chinese food in there, but. Well, he I said crab rangoons. Picks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the appetizer, yeah, I have to get, I have to have You have to do more. your little hat tip. <laughs> <laughs> and my last question for you, Andreas, is when you close your eyes and you think of your happy place, where is that? Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Chad just said Chad's house. I just, I just closed my eyes and we have, you guys can't hear Chad, but Chad said Chad house. And I, I just closed my eyes and imagined that. But no, I, so I'll say the beach. Uh, Tuesday, Tuesday morning, I had a rough morning. I went to the beach. And I discovered that that is actually a happy place to relax, like to relax, chill, reset, and just keep moving forward after like you think everything around. So the beach will be my happy place. Now, I wouldn't necessarily be on the sand. I feel like the sand in between my toes, there, it gets annoying sometimes. But just to park on the side of the beach with my car, just windows down, music on, that's my happy place. I love that. Rich, what's your happy place? It's very similar for me. It's, it's the lake. Like whenever we rent a lake house for the week, uh, everybody sleeps in, but me and I get up and I make myself a pot of coffee and I sit out at the edge of the dock. And at that time of day, six, seven, eight o'clock, there's usually no wind. There's very few people on the lake and just everything is nice and quiet and peaceful. And I've known for a while that that's my happy place. And ultimately, I'd like to own a lake house so I can enjoy that year round. Because even though the lakes freeze over, that's a whole nother level of enjoyment too. Yes. Oh, I love that. I also would one day love to have a lake house. And Chad's happy place is the stage, you guys. He shared that with us and I wanted to share that with you guys. So are you guys ready? We're going to pick a giveaway winner. So Chad, if you will... Let's do a little scroll through our comments and I'm gonna drum roll. We're gonna pick three lucky individuals. So the first person I'm gonna pick is, I'm seeing George Witcher. So George Witcher, OG. The Witcher. OG, you guys make sure to reach out. If I yell your name, reach out to Rich yourself and or let me know and I'm happy to make the introduction for you. So OG, congratulations for like 30 gonna, minutes uh, of time. <laughs> Joanna, Chad pulled you up. So Joanna, you are lucky winner number two. <laughs> yes, you're welcome, Joanna. That, that was a little, little nod from Chad. And will you give one more quick scroll there up and back down for me, Chad? And Kara. 
winner, winner, chicken dinner. Winner, winner. So you three, amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for commenting and just chiming in in the comments. Rich, thank you for being so generous. This for... has been a lot of fun and a good way to break up my day. So um, I appreciate it. I'm so happy to hear that. We have really liked hanging out with you. And I want to know, and our audience wants to know, where can they follow you? What are you working on? Excited about? This is your time to let everyone know where they can touch base with you after the show. I feel like we just finished an episode of Hot Ones and I just had the last dab. Um, <laughs> all right. So what am I working on? I actually just started taking up woodworking for beginners not too long ago, and I've been working on a project. Uh, that actually is nothing related to work, but I'm really, really excited about it. And it's, it's awesome. Um, outside of that, it's year end. I'm doing the evals for my team and planning for next year. And of course, we're starting up the Agents of Change conference, which should be on October 4th, 2023. So that's 10 for good buddy to y'all. You should mark it on your calendars. Um, and I'm just continuing to do hopefully good work for our clients at Flight New Media. If you want to check me out, I am the Rich Brooks on just about every social media channel. If you want to check out my agency, it's at takeflightflyte.com. And if you like podcasts, check out the Agents of Change podcast uh, on your favorite podcasting platform. And that's all the pitches I have. Amazing. Thank you so, so much, Rich. And you guys, we have an amazing show for you for our first show of 2023. Chad, you wanna roll our little stay tuned? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you guys stay tuned, mark your calendar. We have Jessica coming on as our first guest for 2023. She will be on on January 5th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you guys make sure to tune in. We will be back at our regularly scheduled time the first Thursday of every month at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So thank you guys so much for being here, for hanging out. Rich, we loved having you and hope Thanks you guys so have an amazing end of your year.